What is going on, everybody? This is the Colin Thompson Show. Welcome back, Jack Connell, my partner in crime. The glue that holds it all together at Not For Long Media is back with us. Jack, how are we doing today, buddy? Doing good, doing good, you know, business as usual. Nice, calm weekend, back in the swing things. It really seems like we're starting to hit the stride of the football season. It feels like it's already over halfway done. College football is already hitting conference rival week. I don't know we call it rivalry week conference rival week but i mean we're getting there it's crazy to think we're already at this point in the season it feels like just yesterday jay and i were down with you at training camp it really flies by in the season usually early on in the season things move a little slower you know when you're one and oh two and oh one and one whatever you may be one and two it's like oh and then all of a sudden you look up and you're like okay we're four and five we're, you know that's how it usually is uh, for me and many players it's you know, it's funny that way. You're right. We're in rivalry week, right? Those big Florida, Florida State, Mississippi versus Mississippi State, and all those big games are this weekend, Auburn, Alabama. But truly, next weekend is a conference championship play. Pretty crazy. And then the playoff bracket, which in a couple of years will be expanding, will be will just be from even better. We've all been waiting and begging for it. Uh, I digress, Jack. Again, welcome back to the Colin Thompson Show, brought to you by Not For Long Media. A lot going on here. Like Jack saying, the football season is flying by. Our season's flying by. Uh, we have Denver at home this week on Thanksgiving, and then our bye week, and then five straight to finish the year. Um, so, yeah, lots to talk about today. Thanksgiving edition, right? Jack and I are going to talk a little bit about Turkey Day. We're going to do some ratings. But before we do... Lots to talk about here, not for long media. Our friends at Odd G's are killing it. Two Girls, One League had Ian Thomas on last week. They're absolutely killing it. Breaking Bats, our baseball podcast, had the uh, the O's Barstool Sports uh, media member, for lack of a better term, uh, on to talk everything about the O's, who have been unbelievable in Baltimore. Just absolutely killing it for what their kind of payroll is and what they're going to be. Uh, really interesting stuff on their episode. And then last but certainly not least is our friends over at the Sam Boners. For those that are following us, it's no secret we added a new podcast, the Sam Boner, that has taken off. Uh, the podcast has been awesome. Our first episode is just strictly cheesesteaks. Episode zero is introducing what we talked about. Episode one, cheesesteaks. Episode two, Tony Luke's coming on. Episode three, we have people like Kyle Pagan and the grill guy. And we're going to talk chicken cheesesteak and pork sandwiches and cutlets it's fun it's a blast you can sand bone anything folks whether you're drinking whether you're eating send your reviews in tag the sand boners tag us and not for long media over this holiday because the eating is now starting right let's be honest jack the eating is now starting i look forward to christmas eve in my house jack when i was growing up we ate great christmas eve christmas day i loved it what did you like better jack thanksgiving or your christmas situation I'm all Christmas. Christmas was just better all the way around. I'm not, I mean, food wise, I have to give the legs of Thanksgiving. Overall festivities is Christmas. I'm not a big ham person. I, I mean, like I eat ham. It's just like, like it's, it's not that, like, I don't dislike, it's not terrible, but I'm not like other people who like love ham and will eat it with like everything with pizza or whatever. I'm a big turkey. I really like turkey. So I get, I got to give the leg food wise to Thanksgiving on that one. It's a shocker that you like turkey, Jack. White or dark meat? White. Oh my god, Jack! Your palate. You just eat it plain. Well, what do you mean, like on Thanksgiving or like in general? You put gravy on it. Yeah. Okay. 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 I mean, it's a nice like left. This is the one I, I I thought it was normal. But I've been called crazy for it. Like leftovers, like the day or two after, like put like a nice turkey sandwich with like some mayo or something, like salt, pepper. Like that's pretty good. Like in my opinion, like a leftover. Over. Oh, we're, yeah. we're gonna we're gonna get into that in a second. I was just curious to see. Yeah, you you would say you love white, you just love white plain turkey, but we'll we'll get into that later. Lots of discuss, lots of discuss. All right, Jack. Before we do though, you got the Sixers shirt on. Can you fill us in with anything going on in the NBA? Because uh, I'm just you know I saw him beads dinged up a little bit. What's up there? Yeah, so I mean the Sixers are just injury pro James Harden's out for about a month with some foot strain. Tyrese Maxey has a foot injury, he's out a month. And Bede has a all has a very similar injury to James Harden, like a lower foot sprain. He's out day to day. Tobias Harris has a hip injury. 
So that's the Sixers. They're losing everybody. That's also a count. Doc Rivers has been playing every one of their injury-prone starters about 40 minutes a night, which is – I get starters have to play a good amount, but, I mean, 36 is usually like the standard amount always has been. 40 minutes, especially for guys of Harden and Embiid stature, is a very aggressive amount. But, I mean, across the league, the Celtics are still looking – incredibly good the reigning champs golden state have been struggling a lot jordan pool who they just signed to a massive contract not looked anywhere near it steph curry looks as great as he ever has the lakers are struggling immensely i mean those are pretty much the tops the utah jazz who many expected to be by far the worst team in the league this season have i believe they are the best team in the western conference and they might have the best record in the nba and they are just shocking the world because they have no true star or all-star or fringe all-star player. I mean, Laurie Markin is playing like one, but coming in the season, they nowhere near what you would expect from a championship or playoff level team. Interesting. Interesting stuff. It's good stuff out of Jack as always from the NBA. Good stuff as always from Jack from the NBA. Uh, I figured, you know, we have some NBA fans that follow the show, so I figured we'd talk a little bit about that. Okay. I digressed, and that's enough of the NBA chatter. So, Guys, we always start this with Bus One, and I, Bus One members, they get a box of fudge, right? They get a box of fudge. It's the holidays. Man, I love the freaking fudge. There's so many different flavors. I, I hate to pick one. I really do because every time I go in there, I try something different, a little sample here, a little sample there. And just the quality of fudge brings through every single flavor. And also, the, there's so many different flavors. Like some places master, like, hey, you know, you go somewhere, you get the cheesesteak or you go somewhere and you get this type of fudge. No, the original fudge station's got every flavor. And the best part about it is the rest of their sweet treats they have. Chocolate covered pretzels, homemade peanut butter cups, chocolate covered strawberries. Unbelievable. All the candies. And then they ship it across the country. The fudge, the, uh, the sweet treats and the saltwater taffy. Fudgekitchens.com. Check them out. Shipping fudge and sweet treats across the country especially during this holiday season, cannot be beat. Fudgekitchens.com. Guys, the bus one member for me this week on the Colin Thompson Show is Ian Thomas, my teammate, my friend with the Carolina Panthers. Ian and I become great friends, and he's a great player and a great teammate and a great person. This week we had the opportunity to wear hockey jerseys into the Ravens stadium this weekend. Uh, in Baltimore, obviously, where Ian is from, with banners across the chest and Tender Bridge. And I, before I even explain what this, I'm going to explain what it is before I get into it. Tender Bridge was founded in 2003 by current director, Noel Action, Mr. Noel. Ian calls him family. He's also known to the kids in East Baltimore. He He's devoted his life to helping the inner city kids see and understand the alternative choices they have in their life. The Tender Bridge mission is to guide marginalized youth in high violence areas of East Baltimore on the path to become productive citizens while sports are the hook that keep are often difficult to engage kids involved, building trusted relationships with their coach and mentor produces profound growth to their journey in adulthood. They play sports, primarily hockey, raise tons of money, um, football, baseball, sailing, uh, they're managed by third parties while other programs are run by the Tender Bridge itself. Again, it's unbelievable that Mr. Noel, he's been recognized by the NFL, the NBA, uh, the NHL for what he's doing. This is something that Ian was a part of. It used to be called Hockey in the Hood back in the day. Uh, and really, Ian just kind of got picked up by this guy and he said, hey, you want to come play hockey? And Ian kind of got into it and, and fell in love with different sports and helped him through you know, some of his, you know, struggles of growing up where he grew up in Baltimore. Um, Ian is one of the best tight ends in the NFL, well-rounded, one of the best blocking tight ends in the NFL, and had a great game in his hometown in Baltimore. Again, he's a family. He had all his family at the game in Baltimore. It was tremendous. 20, 30, 40 feet people there. I think he had, he had we had 12 people on the sideline for, for my group pregame, and it was like really just like kind of a big group of Ian family a smaller group of my family and friends um bozeman had a good crew there he played in baltimore his wife was there so bus one member this week for the colin thompson show is ian thomas again he had a huge family conglomerate there he's a captain for the game we got to wear the banners tender bridge jerseys into the game he got all of us hooked up with our custom jerseys name and number on the back so any way you can support the tender bridge We'll be donating here at Not For Long Media. Sydney and I will personally be donating as well. 
any way you can help support the tenor bridge a link will be in our bio um and supporting in what he does the better because it's a fantastic organization that helps a lot of people we know where the money goes and that we know who it supports and i have a friend that's a product of that so it's been really cool to support that any way we can so maybe we'll end up tweeting out a picture of ian uh, playing hockey for our videos jack because it's some good stuff it's some good stuff jack were you a hockey player growing up did you play hockey were you like a street hockey demon in your day i did like street hockey i liked playing defense street hockey i always wanted to play hockey but i mean this might come as a shock to you i have like no center of balance and hockey is expensive for kids man like i've had like people i know who like older like kids play hockey or they played hockey it is expensive so between my really not good skating skills and just how i was just i stuck with football but i mean i really i enjoyed playing street hockey growing up and playing nhl video games and all that stuff great video game tremendous video game yeah i played growing up and i absolutely loved it it was uh a great sport really really is a great sport i love it as everybody knows on this show i'm an nhl fan so guys quickly another bus one member this week brought to you by the original fudge kitchen i was doing a little prep for the show today jack shocker and uh blake martinez former nfl linebacker just retired this year shot a nice ticket with the giants a couple years ago played for uh the packers played at stanford he sold a pokemon card six hundred and seventy two thousand dollars jack did you see that i did see that i saw that was very oh i i saw like a little bit of like he like stumbled upon did he stumble upon it did he like not know what it was or was he an active card person i was trying to read a little bit into it but it was essentially that he yeah he went home right did the whole hey mom give me my pokemon cards as a kid and they and they were gone right mom threw him out so i think he got into the trading aspect and he had a little money to leverage and i think he bought a couple groups of cards and one of the cards in there is worth six hundred seventy two thousand dollars so good for blake i mean that's a hell of a retirement present for himself 672 pretty good day at the office yeah pretty much what are you doing with that 672 jack not jack right now i'm talking about like yeah or sure jack right now what are you doing with that six hundred seventy two thousand, jack First, it goes to loans. First off, probably put nice down payment. Maybe get some nice Lano little Jack Sweet, new Jack Mobile. I would imagine just set myself up with the basics on a high level. I would so imagine a I'll, house, a car, and pay off loans. Probably, yeah. Just it's just the the normal. Maybe like buy a, myself a box of fudge from Fudge Kitchen. Ah, uh, <laughs> the harmless plug there from Jack FudgeKitchens.com. Shipping budget sweet treats across the country. All right. I digress. I digress. I digress. Under the bus. Have to throw some people under the bus, right? Brought to you by Mia Michi, the best Italian food in the Charlotte area. It's Monday night, Jack. I can't go tonight. I'm kind of bummed. Then he's out of town. I'm looking for a place to grab a bite deep by myself. I want to go to Mia Michi. It's that good. <laughs> I love it. Nick hands me the remotes in there, and I pop on the, you know, he's got the two new TVs that I've kind of been on and they put in there, and he put the TVs on, and he helps. I put on the sports, or I put on different shows for him. So, yeah, you know me. I'm like an intermediate bar of the week. We're rating TVs. I mean, Michi's actually building a bar, which is awesome. So we'll be able to support that. Maybe that'll be the bar of the week one time. But yeah, me, Michi, again, the best Italian food in Charlotte. Utica Greens, love them. Mouth watering for them as we speak. Uh, chicken parms off the freaking chain. Meatballs, the whole nine. Also, healthier options. Uh, the salads are ridiculously fresh, ridiculously good. Always do that. Throw some salmon on top. Always well cooked, always well prepared. It's a family business, so we support it here, and not for long. Media in the Colin Thompson Show. Me and Michi, the best Italian food in the Charlotte area. Under the bus, Jack has to do with the XFL. All of the haters, Jack, were thrown under the bus. All the people that thought the NF XFL was not going to work, it is going to work. It is going to continue to work. This is XFL 3.0. There are big name players that have been drafted. There are players trying to re re resurrect their career. There are players that are trying to start their pro career. There are players that, you know, instead of extra years of eligibility that are entering, entering the XFL draft, there's just something different to it. The USFL, the AAF, all those things, spring league, they've had success. They haven't had success, all that. The XFL is backed by the rock ESPN, these big markets. It ends, it starts, excuse me, Right in the middle, uh, right after the Super Bowl, excuse me, Jack, right right after the Super Bowl. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself here. It starts right after the Super Bowl. So when football's over and everyone's upset, depressed, 
boom, you're over right into the XFL vibe. And that brings me into who we have coming on today. Jonathan Heimbach's coming on today. He's an XFL offensive line coach. He works with Five as One, his own personal company. That's tremendous, working with youth, developing offensive linemen. That's what he does best. Wait till you see this guy's resume. You'll hear me run through it uh, in this interview. Jaime was my XFL coach in the XFL and is a great, great, great guy, great coach, uh, great father, and just has a ridiculous resume, and he has bounced around. He's been a lot of places. He played at USC. He also played in the original XFL. He coached in XFL 2.0, and now he's coaching in XFL 3.0. I think he's the only person who could say that. So uh, we'll send it over to Jaime here when we finish up our intro, but I buried the lead per usual. Jonathan Heimbach joined us, a tremendous person, tremendous guy, and a really good football coach. So I think the XFL is going to work. Temple-wise, Anthony Russo, Archbishop Wood graduates going into it. He was drafted. Uh, he'll be in San Antonio, I believe. Uh, Raquel Armstead, a really good NFL running back at one point in time. He had COVID last year uh, pretty bad when he was with Jacksonville. He got released, and he'll really do really well. He'll be in D.C. close to home. I know he's a daughter. He lives in, from Jersey, so that'll be nice for him to be close to home. And Raquel's going to absolutely tear this league up. He's a really good runner, and he will tear this league up. And that place in Washington will be bonkers. I know we'll be going to a game. In Washington, that place sells out and is tremendous. They play at the soccer stadium. I think it's Audi Field in D.C. And then Isaiah Graham Mobley, who transferred to Boston College his fifth year, but played at Temple. Uh, these are guys that I played with, too. Um, you know, these are the young guys on our teams when I was at Temple. But IGM finished at B.C., was here in Carolina for training camp, a great kid, and he'll do well in that league. So we're throwing people under the bus that didn't think it was going to be great. You got Vic Beasley, A.J. McCarron, Will Hill, Marquette King, uh, who else? There's a lot of people. Matt Jones, an old buddy of mine from Florida. He'll do great. Uh, they moved a couple of teams around like we talked about before. Matt Elam's in it. Former first-round pick. Uh, Jacquees Patrick. Jacquees Patrick. I watch Jacquees. Shout-out to Connor Buckridge and Papa Buck. Uh, really for uh, having me come out to practice years and years ago and watch Jacquees Patrick, uh, who was at Florida State who was with us in Carolina, bounced around the NFL. And he uh, he was in, he's in the XFL, and he's an absolute stud. I'm sorry, I'm being distracted here. But he was an absolute stud for us in the XFL. Uh, and he'll do really well in this version of the XFL. He's yeah, Okay, so he's going to San Antonio. Russo's in San Antonio. Watch out for Jack Patrick. He's an absolute beast. He's going to tear it up. Ben, uh, was it Danucci, Jack, from yeah, James Ben Danucci. Yeah. He's, is he a local guy, Jack? I don't know. I just remember him being the Cowboys backup. And, like, there was all, like, the TikTok memes. It was like, Ben Donucci. That was yeah. all I know about him. I just I don't know how good he played. I remember he started one game against the Eagles. But he's he's a pretty relevant TikTok guy. He's like, I've been seeing him. He's been doing a bunch of, like, day-in-the-life XFL stuff. The Las Vegas Vipers were going to have Bob Wiley, uh, the famous coach from the HBO that would say, said, hi. <laughs> That hot? All right, the, the Browns O line coach, uh, the huh? Yeah, yeah, the Brown. Yeah, what I say, the Browns, the Browns uh, O line coach. Yeah, he supposedly Jack. He he had like a patent or he made something in football and he made a killing off of it. Did not know that. I don't know what it the is. The only thing I remember about Bob Wiley is how he said that we won two world wars off not stretching, and I love that quote. It's one of my favorite quotes of all time. Great. You think anybody was stretching when they were running across Normandy? Jack, look up and see what he invested in and made money on, if you don't mind. Because I know, like, people I talk to in the, that played for the Browns are like, yo, he used to drive sports cars, all these different things. We'll keep him moving. Again, everyone under the bus, all the haters about the XFL. It will be packed this year. They they re, they did it. They they made, put a breath of fresh air in it. I'm lost for some words today. I'm struggling. They put a breath of fresh air through the league. There's a team in Vegas now. They moved it from Tampa to Orlando. There's more people there. Uh, they took the team from New York, which is an extremely competitive environment. They moved that. So, I think it's going to be good. San Antonio is going to be a great crowd. That's going to sell out. There was a team in the AAF there, not the last version of the XFL. Uh, so I think that will do. There's a, team in, uh, there's a team in Houston. There's a team in Dallas. So those teams will be able to bust. It's going to be good stuff. So, excuse me, me, Michi, our official sponsor. What do you got, Jack? You find anything? I have yet to find anything. That might All have right. been an inside scoop. I'm like, keep looking. I could have, yeah, we're breaking news on that for a long here. I digress, Jack. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll delay here as you search. Guys, we're going to pour some out. Some sleep. 
promo code Colin. All of our podcasts here have a deal with some sleep. Promo code Colin. You got bats for breaking bats. You got girls. You got ah, oh, geez. You got whoever you want to support. Promo code Colin for 10% off the, the best sleep product in the freaking world. In the freaking world. Psalm sleep. It puts you to sleep. It keeps you asleep. And you rise to kick ass in the morning. That's why I love it. Because getting up and rocking and rolling as the season wears long. November 21st. We've been at it since July 21st. Psalm sleep gets you right through it. Absolutely love it. So check him out. Psalm sleep. We're going to pour some sleep out. And he's going to need this. He went on IR, Kyle Pitts, uh, Archbishop Wood graduate, played at Florida, absolute stud for the Atlanta Falcons. He's just different than everybody else in the league other than a couple people. Uh, he went on IR. So we're thinking about you, Kyle. Pour some sun sleep out for you. Uh, sleep good in your recovery. It's the number one way to, rec- number one way to recover. And uh, wish him nothing but the best. He'll be fine. He's going to have a long career. He's going on IR. I don't know too many details about it. It could be short term. could be longer term. It's something to do with his knee there. He's getting multiple opinions. That's all I know. But uh, wishing Kyle nothing but the best of luck. What do you got, Jack? Anything? I got nothing. Like I said, I've, this is probably the most in-depth somebody's done research on Bob Wiley. Like, I'm just, like, going – like I'm, like, on, like, page four of Google searches of, like, different – I haven't found a thing. Okay, so. fine. It's okay. It's insider knowledge. But I think he owns a patent of something in the football world when it comes to like a blocking machine or something. That's Bob Wiley. So, food for thought. Jack, I'm going to do the bar of the week, and then we're going to dive into the matchups, which is going to be us versus Thanksgiving. And then we're going to do our ratings in the matchup segment. Guys, the bar of the week this week brought to you by SeatGeek. Use promo code Colin Thompson, C O L I N T H O M P S O N, on anything over 50 bucks. Using that promo code, Colin Thompson, my full name, gets you 20 bucks off your ticket. So $50 ticket, boom, 30 bucks. That's all it is. Help us help you. Promo code Colin at Seeky. Guys, bar of the week this week at the Colin Thompson Show is the Plumsteadville Pub. It's Thanksgiving. Okay, this is the spot we would go when I turned 21 with my dad, with my uncle. It's right between my house and my uncle's house where we have Thanksgiving or our house or whatever it may be. It was a meeting place for our town, our community. Uh, the Plumsetville Pub located just really just north of Doylestown um, is an awesome, awesome place. It's a local's place. It is a local's place. It's got the cool, fun dive bar feel to it. And we absolutely love it in there. So Butch. Andrea, the owners, have become friends. Their kids have become friends of ours. The locals in there, they're our neighbors, they're our friends. It's the place we would go until Thanksgiving, right up to the last second, buying everyone beers, wishing everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Do the same thing on Christmas Eve, probably more so on Christmas Eve. Um, Just enjoying each other's camaraderie. People coming in that only come in once or twice a year for that would always be in for the holidays. So I had to think about the hometown bar this week, which is the Plumstead Bill Pub. Awesome TVs, four out of five. We watched the Eagles Super Bowl there a few years back when the Eagles won it. That was a really great memory of mine. Four out of five on the TVs, great TVs for games. The food and ambiance, it's a four. The food, guys, is really good bar food. Fresh cut fries, great cheesesteaks, great wraps. I love their smoked wings. Absolutely love. Awesome bar food at the pub. And they always have great specials, and they're innovative, and it's fun. They do a great job with that. So, Absolutely love it. Again, great TVs, big bar, fun bar to sit at, big square bar, so good ambiance there. Pool table, darts, it's got that great vibe to it. Uh, The service is great. Bartenders are awesome, four out of five. And then the cold beer, you know, very rare you're going to see this at bars, folks, and this is what makes the pub freaking absolutely killer is their cold beer is on ice, folks. It is on ice. It's in the ice trough, and they have the jumbo beers, the twist-off aluminums. So absolutely love with that got going on there. So five out of five on the beer, four to five on the service, food and ambiance, four out of five, and a four out of five on the TV. So a great score for the pub, 17 out of 20. The pub, Pumps at Ville Pub. Check them out. Shout out to our friends, Actions Over Words as well while we're at it. Again, Actions Over Words Apparel.com. Always donating a piece of what they sell to a charity of choice. They do a great job there. Shout out to Alec and the Levins. Okay. Before we wrap it up and send it over to Jonathan Heimbach, perfect timing with the XFL draft this week. Unbelievable XFL. Um, 
coach, mentor, friend. Check him out. Five is one. Check everything he's out got going on. Okay, Jackie. The matchup this week is us versus our Thanksgiving meal. Okay, big time, Jack. Big time. Talk me through your day, and then talk me through your top five items, Jack. What are you What are you excited for on Thanksgiving meal? I'm I'm like left in shambles this year because my Thanksgiving Day traditions are all ruined now because. I, like I mentioned last week, there's no Hapro Horsham Upper Moor on Thanksgiving football game. So, like, that was for, like, my entire – it was either I was going to the game, playing in the game, like, coaching the game, and now here I am, first year post-COVID, chance of finally going to spectate as an alum, and there's no game. So, I think it's done for good. The only one still standing to my knowledge is Penridge Quakertown, which I do should, believe is being played this year. I was just Googling that. You should go to that game. It's tremendous. If it's it at Penridge – I mean, they're, both, the they're both not the same for me, but I'll, I'll take it. I don't know which it's at this year, but I mean, I love side note, love Quakertown stadium, probably my favorite stadium I played in Pretty anyways. Good. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, it was always that come home. I want to song my parents. I would always have to listen to it because my parents love it. I mean, it's, it's an art song. It's now the Alice's restaurant. It's like some like 25 minute song. I don't even know based on it. The one line just stuck in my head. So I was like the one Thanksgiving thing. Sing it, and Jack. Then, What's the one line? I can't sing it. So you can get anything you want at Alice's restaurant, whatever. There you go, Jack. Um, <laughs> Thanks for serenading us, Jack. All right, so what do we got? So, I mean, so dinner, I mean, I'm a very basic Thanksgiving person. Shocker. I mean, I, I won't say what I'm eating because I feel like we got to see it for the top five. This is the top five, Jack. This is your Oh, home. we're doing the top five now? Absolutely. So, number five, I got mashed potatoes and gravy. Four, I just got some like really good like rolls. Like they got to be like buttered on top, nice, warm, fresh out of the oven. Okay. Number three, I got pumpkin pie. Two, I've got turkey. Just you gotta get turkey's got to be up there. And then one, I got mac and cheese. Like a nice wow. breaded but in the oven, nice crisp, crisp crust on the top of it. Mac and cheese can't be beat. Okay. Okay. I like it. I like it. I mean, there's some really good ones there, Jack. There's some really good ones there. Okay, I'm going to give you my list. I'm going to go five. I'm going cornbread. Love it. Can't be beat. Yeah, you struck out on that one, Jack. We don't make – I like cornbread. My family doesn't make cornbread, so I didn't think of it. But I really – okay, I, I, Jack. This, I think we're going to a steakhouse for dinner this year, right? If we're not at home, it's, it's a little bit of a different schedule being it, you know. So I think you, you got to imagine what, what would be your ideal meal, Jack. So we're going five for me on my list of what I like to eat on Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to go cornbread five. I brined and smoked a turkey on Friendsgiving a couple of years ago when I was playing and I had a bye week and we did it and it was incredible because turkey should not be on this list. Anybody's top five, no. But we brined it and smoked it. It was ridiculously good. The dark meat was unbelievable. So five cornbread, brine and smoked turkey comes in at four. Uh, we're going to go regular stuffing. Really good stuffing comes in at three. I love pineapple stuffing as well. Very random, but very good. Miami makes a really good one. Uh, let's see stuffing number two, you can't beat the Mac and cheese. Right. And number one for me is dirty rice. Now for the northerners may not know what this is. My mother-in-law and my, my wife's side of the family and uh, the Southern folk know exactly what dirty rice is. It's a seasoned rice with a little bit of meat in there. Absolutely freaking delicious, Jack. So dirty rice, uh, that rounds off my top five, Jack. That's the ideal meal for me. There's some other things in there, obviously. No gravy in there. That's a lot of good stuff. A lot of good stuff. So anything else, Jack, before we have to go? No, I think we pretty much, we touched on a lot of subjects today. We have a wide variety of topics today. But yeah, just, I can't say enough my disdain for, I don't even know who would even listening, pays attention or cares, my disdain for lack of a Hapro Horsham Thanksgiving Day Parade or game. Yeah. I was pissed because there, there was a parade and we always were in the parade or you go to watch it. And I was like thinking pre, I'm like, oh, well, the big event, the football game's not even there. Like the football teams aren't even there because there's no game. Jack, we give you there. the forum here, man. You can you can get upset anything anything you want. All right, I'm, I'm like I said, I could go on for a rant, but it's just go it's, to the Penridge Quaker Town game. I went there as a kid. You should go, Jack. Get up in the morning. You'll have a day off. Is, is Ross rocking and rolling on Thursday? He's got a game. He's he's broadcasting the Cowboys game. Perfect. So you don't have to work. You're always working because you're a freaking grinder. You are a grinder. But I would go, Jack. Maybe do a content piece about Jack in the back. What it takes 
to have a Thanksgiving Day game or go to your local, you know, go run around and have play play a little, you know, pigskin down at the field, Jack. Nothing, nothing will ever top the cold. I can't. I will be wherever prepped for whatever cold comes. Nothing will ever top 2018 Thanksgiving, my senior year. It was a neg. It was 11 degree wind chill. That I was wearing four layers and I was still freezing. Whatever it takes. <laughs> whatever. It so takes. that's my friend, my best friend. He goes out of the gate because, like, we always sh- shout out Joe Holman. He always had us wear half shirts. So I'm, I'm sure he did that with you at Wood. He was like, always oh, got to wear half shirts so the sweat doesn't get trapped. So like, we wore them all season. And my best friend going to the last game is like, oh, I'm keeping the tradition, half shirt, no layers, negative or 11 degree wind chill, nothing's getting me. There Half time, are. he almost had frostbite. He had to put on like three layers, yeah. two ways. Like, it was just so the tough guy act with the cold. It was cold this weekend in Baltimore. Whew. Windy <laughs> in the 20s. It was cold, cold. And uh, it got better during the game. Actually, it wasn't that bad. But in warm ups, it was freaking blowing cold. Uh, now, go- when you're playing in the cold, do you do the latex glove under the glove? Um, it's a great question. I have in the past. But I don't, I don't like it. But I have in the past. I've done it. We did it. I did it in Washington two years ago. It was like a rainy, cold day, like thirty-five, almost like almost sleet. And I was like, I'm getting like you're getting wet, you know. And there's no hiding. So I put the latex glove on, then the glove. A lot of guys do a little like Vaseline all over their bodies. It clogs their pores up. Um, so guys do that. And then I'll wear like a. I don't wear long sleeves ever. Uh, if you're ever going to handle the football and you wear long sleeves in bad weather, you're crazy. You're crazy. And you don't, and you are okay with fumbling. Um, uh, you got to wear the, we have like the cold weather gear, but it's a, it's pretty much sleeveless, right? So it's a, all the old under armors we wore back in the day that everyone wore uh, that kept you warm. Yeah. It's that's so that's what I wear. So got the heaters, Jack. We're spoiling this league. We got heated seats. We got freaking. I'm wiping the seats down for the guys if it's raining. We're all spoiled in this. We're spoiled in this league, buddy. That's 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 this league. That's why it's the best in the world. So, guys, I don't want to delay anymore. Jonathan Heimbach, he is the Arlington Renegades offensive line coach in the XFL. A tremendous resume, a great guy, and a great football coach. He's done a lot for me as a player, as a person. I learned a lot from Heimbach. So, I'm going to send Jonathan Heimbach. Thank you all to our sponsors. Thank you for everyone for supporting our podcast and our other podcasts here at the Not For Long Media Family. That's Jack Collin. That's Jack Connell. I'm Colin Thompson. See you guys. All right. So my buddy, it's weird to say my buddy. He was my coach at one point in time. Uh, someone I really learned a lot from, from another room as a tight end, always getting involved with the O-line. Jonathan Heimbach, O-line coach for everybody in the history of professional football. How you doing, brother? <laughs> Good man, good to see you. I appreciate it. It's good to connect. It's uh, it's been awesome to uh, to watch you and do your thing and making a name for yourself, not only on the field, man, but uh, a uh, personality uh, off the field. So this is cool to be able to join you. No, thank dude. I thanks for coming on. I I've been meaning to get you on for a while now. I try to have, you know, everybody who works with me on the pod our teams like you know christian mccaffrey baker mayfield i'm like no i don't i we, yes we can do that but i really like having just awesome stories on you know the people that have done it and it done it a different way and you know you're doing a lot of things you got five is one going we're going to get into that you're coaching you're mentoring before we get any of it though what are you up to now currently well, I appreciate you bumping, you know, Christian McCaffrey and, and you know, Baker. Bumped them out. And the boy and the fellas for, you know, you know, hey, we'll get to them when we get to them. You got your priorities right. Appreciate right. it. Um, I do. Um, what am I doing? I am loving life being dad. I've got two kids, two boys, one that's a senior in high school, um, going through the recruiting process, which is pretty cool to be a dad after 25 years of coaching ball at every level. I get to just ride his coattails. So it's pretty cool. Um, we're actually going to be down in Charlotte next, this coming weekend. Uh, I know you guys are on the road, um, but um, he's getting recruited by Coastal Carolina and, and UNC Charlotte. Um, and so we kind of were, do we debate? Do we still go down to Charlotte with coaching change over there? But he's, because we grew up in the Carolinas. Um, I don't know if you know, I grew up in North Carolina. My dad was a coach at UNC at Chapel Hill. Um, but I coached at Wake Forest. So we spent a lot of times down in the Carolinas. My parents and my brother are still there. So we've got an affinity to the Carolina area. Um, so we're, I'm just dad hanging around, 
you know, driving him all over the place. And then I got a, a another son that's that's a freshman. So I get to be dad and help coach their team because I'm coaching spring ball right now. I'm coaching in the XFL um, 3.0, the XFL. This is the third time around. And I think I am the only person to ever be a part of all three leagues. I was a player in 2001 when it came, uh, when it started with, uh, you know, Vince McMahon. Mm -hmm. And uh, when that thing got rolling as an alternative league in the spring league, everybody's been trying to pull this off really since then. Um, And then I coached, I was fortunate enough to coach in Tampa with you in 2.0. Um, before the pandemic Mm. and then it's been fast and furious and and here we go we're going to get this thing kicked off here in february the week after the super bowl and so when i'm not dad when i'm not evaluating players getting ready for our upcoming draft um i'm coaching my son's team and doing some personal training doing some o-line stuff so it's been you know jack of all trades master of none lately yeah that's the best way to be though everyone's like (laughs) You spread so thin. You do all these different things. I'm like, I don't know. I'm not really spread thin. Like, I coach high school football. I get to do this media company. You know, the playing stuff is what it is. But when I'm done playing, like the day's done, I want to do something else. I really, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a groover. I'm my mom in a way. That's my mom. She's freaking grinder. I'm not saying I'm a grinder, but I like to stay full. You know, I like my schedule to be full. I hear you. Same thing. It's like. Yeah. My wife's looking at me like, okay, you're not doing the full 24 seven coaching right now. What are you going to do? And I got to find something to keep myself out of trouble, whether it's training kids, um, you know, helping out with my own kids, helping coach their team. Um, I've got a personal training company. We've started an apparel line. We're doing NIL stuff for a bunch of kids that I've coached before. And then obviously getting ready to kick this spring league off. So it's uh, you got to keep yourself busy. And when you're in the coaching mindset, like when I've coached division one ball or when I'm coach pro ball, it's, it's all consuming. It's from when you get up at three thirty, four o'clock in the morning and you go till you pass out and it's like, okay, groundhog's day, every single day you roll. And this is an exciting time just with prepping for the XFL league with the new franchises coming out and all that stuff where there's a little bit of a buzz on the league right now, but it's every day is different. And I think that's, what's cool about sports is you never quite know you're going to win one week. You're going to lose the next. You're going to, you know, players, roster is going to change. Seasons are going to change. It's, it's always something going on, man. And it's all for that, like one moment in the locker room after the win or the bus ride (laughs) home or whatever. Cause like, right. You know, I was telling somebody and I want to get back uh, to your son in a second, but I was telling someone the other day, like, you know, what's it like? And you, know, you guys are up and down. Everyone always thinks it's more emotional than it is. It's just such a business. It's such a shame. It's good and bad. It is a shame. It's what pays our bills. But it's like when you go on the bus after the game, like, especially in pro football, especially in the NFL, really exclusively in the NFL, when you win, there's some people smiling and laughing, but like people are on their phone, like calling their families. And then like you're on the bus and then you go to the plane and like everyone sits in their seats and like, yeah, there should be some guys playing cards or whatever it may be, but it's not like a whole thing. And if you lose, like it's the same thing, just a little less laughing. Like it's still, so I always try to explain that about pro football. People always ask like, what's the difference? I did enjoy it. Right. I'm going to, there's a million things on my mind. University of, uh, UNC Charlotte is freaking nice, beautiful school. We do our pool workouts there on Mondays and Thursdays. We use it at okay. user pool facility. And, you know, I've always come around the kind of backside of the school or the front side of the school, I guess how you explain it. And you go into the pool and you don't see campus. And the one day I made the wrong turn, I kind of got turned around. I'm like, okay, I know where I'm at. I'm just going to go through the middle of campus. I'm like, wow, this place is beautiful. Like, it's a great school. The, the, yeah. I played a I played a football game there. Their inaugural season is that maybe that's fat far fetched. We played in a hurricane okay. here. They had a couple of NFL guys, but yeah, uh, yeah, I was impressed by it. Good luck to your son, man. Coastal too. They're not bad options for him. What else is he yeah. got? Anybody no, else? Or those are the two main. He's got a couple. I mean, we want to do because he's got a buy this week. So um, first round of playoffs, they went ten and zero. Shout out to the Palmer Ridge Bears. What's up? We're we're having fun, man. It's been nice. uh, it's been hard to win every single week, but these kids are grinders. They get it done. They just find a way. Um, so it's been fun to be around that crew, that group. They've earned themselves a week off in the playoffs. And uh, and so he's got a couple options. And I said, hey, man, do what you want to do. 
Um, he's a tight end. He's a long snap uh, uh, DN, but like long snapping is his deal, um, right. which is what I did. I was an I was an undersized O lineman, and I could save one more roster spot by being an O lineman, a long snapper, and it's like the more you can do, you know, yeah. that then they can put another receiver on the roster, they can put another DB, somebody else. So um, he came to me as a freshman after playing his first year of ball, really, and he said, "Dad, I want to play football at the highest level." I said, all right, buddy, that's great, man. I got good news and bad news. Good news is I think you can do it. I think you can play at a high level. Bad news is there's only one spot. I think you can really, truly do it. And that's the last stop on the, on the bus. And that's long snapper. Um, but he's taken to it and uh, he's got a couple options. You know, he's got some SEC schools, some Pac-12 schools. So this was kind of our East Coast swing that he's going to roll through there and check it out. So it's fun, man. It's been a lot of fun being dad and, and taking it all in. You were, you know, I would say a big time recruit. You went to USC. What's the difference between your recruitment and his back in the day? Well, it's a little bit different. I mean, there's so much movement in college football right now. I mean, you see it. I mean, you see it at at the pro level. You know, guys are there. They get two, three years. And so I said, you've got to pick a school. I tell them, you got to pick a school that you're okay with, that the coach is going to be gone. That, you know, yes, you want to have a coach that's going to get the most out of it. You want to be go somewhere where they believe in you and you believe in their vision, but you want to be in an area, in a school that you're going to get a great degree from. And then what you do with it is, is your choice and let football um, open some avenues and windows, you know, for you to make a better life. But I mean, the biggest thing is just everybody's trying to get the quick fix and in recruiting right now, especially with just dealing with COVID, where rosters were impacted, kids were coming back for their sixth years. And, and it was hard for to be a parent and see that for kids, there's not many opportunities. And then the transfer portal is insane. You know, how much we see kids are going somewhere and a kid will graduate and you can just find a guy for one year. And it's truly free agency at the college level, which trickles down to the high school level. And so as a parent, you just try to stay back and, and be a source of support. Um, but this is my industry. This is what I've done. My dad coached. I've coached for, you know, over 25 years. And it's just like, hey, I'm watching this process move along. And it's just accelerated so much. And I think the biggest thing that he's got a level head to say, I'm going to choose the right school that's for me, not just the biggest school out there. I mean, he's got Pac-12s and SEC, but it's like, he wasn't just find the right fit for him. So it's kind of cool to just let the process roll itself through. That's great, man. That's great. You said it trickles down to the high school level. I, mean, I get it. I went to, you know, private Catholic school. I was a public school kid and I needed to change. I, I really, truly believe. I think you can, people look back and say, Colin went there for football and I did, but I needed to change socially too. I probably didn't realize it at the time. I just needed some more like-minded people. You know, that were like, like I was telling people, like, I wasn't telling people to ask, what are you going to do when you go to her? I'm like, I'm going to play in the NFL. Like, people look like you got four heads. And when I said that, when I was with the Archbishop Wood, like, people still looked at me like I had maybe two heads, but it wasn't as crazy. It was like, okay, you're, you, you're here. Okay, we get it. We get what's going on. We get the vision. Like, some of my best friends of this day, they they never laughed at me when I said that, you know, and they were like, all right, man, go do it, you know? Right. So, how's the trickery down to the high school level? Well, yeah, I had a very similar situation too. Like I was at a public school my freshman year. My brother went to that school and they were struggling. I mean, they won like one or two games, the varsity level before. And so I looked around and talked to my parents and they said, hey, why don't we get a little bit of a better move academically for you, a better um, parochial all boys school. And it was like, hey, I'm going to go to a winning program and it, and it helps springboard me. So I think right now, what you see is kids are looking to better themselves and they're using sports to do that. Like we all have done, you know, let me, let me get a better degree. Let me get to a better program. I want to be a part of a good program, which you don't have the typical, I'm going to stay right in my own backyard because there's open enrollment in a lot of places and they're going to go where the opportunity is and kids are going to gravitate towards winning programs and coaching stability and, you see the the pressure of coaching in the in the pro ranks, obviously. You see the pressure in coaching in the college ranks. Guys are getting let go after a couple of years. And now you're seeing it at the high school level. I mean, there's there's high school coaches getting heat for not competing or not playing out of state games or not playing, 
big profile games out there. And it's like, man, everybody needs to take a step back, though, and enjoy the moment at the high school level. But those that are truly driven and want to play at the next level, you got to make sacrifices. And if you just want to have a good high school experience and play with your boys and have that Friday night experience and that's the end of your playing career, then it's not for everybody. But if you truly want to make sacrifices and commit to it, and that's the thing, like when we moved, my son had to look for a new school. And so when we moved out here after the pandemic, after the XFL shut down, um, I was fortunate enough to get a job at the Air Force Academy coaching tight ends. So it was pretty cool coaching the tight ends, looking at things from outside the box, not just inside it. Mm -hmm. Uh, But he had to find a new high school. And so I said, hey, you've got to pick where you want to go. We looked at the two main uh, football programs in town and went and watched practices and he felt comfortable at both, but he just went with his gut. And I think that's what a lot of kids, if they want to play at that next level, if they want to set themselves up, you want to be around like-minded people. And, and, you know, kind of, you've had to make a little bit of a run, like <laughs> your resume is similar to mine, man. I mean, I, I was a journeyman player as, as, uh, I try to play as long as I can and nothing changed. Now I'm just a journeyman coach and uh, <laughs> it's just a, uh, you know, a gun for hire. You try to have a great experience. You can try to win as many games as possible, but between the Alliance of American football, the XFL, the USFL, now I'm back in the XFL. I mean, there's been a lot of stops on this world tour, man, as you know. Yeah. I think it's the only way to do it. What Jaime was talking about was when he's coaching the tight ends, a little bit of outside the box too, with inside the box for those listening at home. Inside the box, Jaime's an offensive lineman, former offensive lineman, offensive line coach, really, truly one of the best I've been around. And he was talking about now tight end position. We got to play the whole field. It's a little bit different game, but real tight ends play in the box. Let's be honest. <laughs> I, I, that's kind of my thing. I'm jaded and jealous toward that. Yes. So, Jaime's got just an unreal resume. Go on Wikipedia and check it out, guys. Like, unreal player. Cardinals preseason, Arizona, then the Rain Fire, then the Kansas City Chiefs in the preseason. Toronto Argonauts. This is from 98 all the way to the end of his pro career in 2002. The LA Extreme, and then the Rain Fire. The Extreme were in the XFL? That's right. We, Dude, we are, the, uh, we are, I guess I can say, the reigning XFL champs because we never finished the season in 2.0. So, yeah. we want um, – So I'm a graduate assistant at UNLV in Las Vegas for my college coach, John Robinson. Uh, I played at USC and I'm a GA making bologna and cheese money. And uh, my my wife supporting me trying to start this coaching gig and um, the offense coordinator for the L.A. team in the XFL um, had coached me in Canada. And so we said, hey, they're doing this regional spring league. We have your rights since you played at USC. So they picked me up and I was like, no doubt I want to go back and play ball. And uh, so I was in the same shoes that a lot of these guys are right now that have been cut, that have been practice squad, that are just trying to get more film. So we go, I make six figures. We win the whole championship. They split a million bucks with all the guys that were active. So it was good money, man. It was a lot of money. Yeah, bro. I mean, I was making... That's a lot of yeah, money was, then. Oh, no now that old. I'm not that old. It's not like you know. Uh, well, I but, mean, yeah. let's say 2001. Right. No, it was it was good. It was a good gig. I was a graduate assistant, making nothing, going to grad school, trying to get my master's in education, and all that stuff. And I go back and play, and like Tommy Maddox, you probably know the name was mm-hmm. our quarterback, was the comeback player of the year in the NFL. Came back, signed with the Steelers, had a great kind of resurgence to his career. And uh, and so got a chance to play was his center. You know, Tommy played at UCLA. I played at SC. So it was a lot of kind of West Coast guys on our team. We won the whole thing. I go back to being a graduate assistant, did my second year and then played in NFL Europe. Um, It was kind of the developmental league um, for the NFL. And really, since then, there hasn't been a league that's stuck. I think we were on the right track with the XFL until the pandemic hit. and I'm sure we'll get more into that, man, because that was we are a, oh, an awesome experience. But man, there's been a lot of stops on this tour. But I had a blast playing in the first XFL. I mean, they they pushed it pretty hard. I mean, they they hit the wrestling, the WWE stuff, where I think people expected us to be jumping off the goalpost with like folding chairs and hitting each other. Like that, that I think that's what the expectation was. 
and you get a bunch of guys that were just cut from NFL camps. We're just trying to get film. And all of a sudden they say, hey, do you want to make a little bit of a personality? You can put nicknames on the back of your jersey. You can do, you know, hang out with the cheerleaders. And, the, uh, you know, they were trying to do a little bit more showmanship with McMahon and, you know, The Rock, who's now our owner of the league was introducing the team and they kind of had the wrestling persona on NBC. So um, I was just trying to play some ball and put some money in my pocket. And so it was, uh, it was fun to play a bunch of great dudes. And probably like you remember when we were in Tampa or the Alliance, just guys that are trying to have a blast out there and play some ball. Yeah, it, it was, um, we'll transition to the XFL. I was really <laughs> bummed. You know, I, I was, I was heartbroken, I guess, was the only word. I think, too, we were in a really trending in the right direction as a team. We kind of sputtered in the beginning, trying to find out who we were. And then, boom, we caught fire. Two of the best running backs in the league. We had really a good team. Great offensive line play. Uh, the corn dog, uh, Taylor Cornelius, who's been on the show before. He's up in where now? Edmonton Elks? Edmonton, yeah. Yeah, yep. they just quarterback the for the season. yeah. I, I love playing for him with them. We just turned the corner. And I think that's what really broke. You know, we, we should have beat Houston. We end up winning a game at home. We beat DC, I think. Yeah. And then we should have beat Houston, but we were trying in the right direction. I think we make the playoffs and we contend for the championship. I, my bet would be we play in the championship and who knows what happens from there. But I thought we had the right form of the right guys. It was so much fun. I loved it. I learned a lot. I think, and I'll ask you this, I think you, people always ask me about the league, right? Always like XFL, like they put a picture up, uh, coach McAdoo put a picture up in the offensive unit meeting because of me and PJ Walker, because PJ got up, you know, gets up and just kind of shares his notes on Saturday. You know, here's my signals. Here's my, this, here's the cadence I like, here's the protection if they're bringing this, right? Just your normal meeting. The quarterback kind of ran the end of it. And he always puts a, p a picture up of the guys. He put a question mark over my face with PJ and people were guessing and they couldn't <laughs> guess who it was. I'm like, that's right, baby. Out of the mud. I don't want to hear it. You guys are, you guys forget. I'm walking around here like I'm out of the mud, man. Alliance and XFL. <laughs> right. um, so, you know, it was funny. It's a picture of PJ and I in training camp in Houston. But uh, but I digress, man. I was just freaking heartbroken because I, I really enjoy the league. I compare the league compared to the AAF. I say AAF made more money, but really there was just no backbone to it. The travel was average. The food was – it just wasn't all the things that you kind of take for granted as a college football player or a pro football player. I thought the XFL, we had, you know, we had breakfast and lunch for us. We had a great facility we were at, too, in Tampa, like mm -hmm. three grass fields. Like, that's unheard of. We had a great outdoor weight room. We had great strength coaches. We had a lot of really good men in our building. Like, I really just enjoyed going to work. I got Peak Mangarian as my – tight end coach. I get to yep. pop in the O-line coach with you guys. Like it was a real true football experience. And I think if you had a lot, if you had some maturity to you, you would really get a lot out of it. Like you would really value the XFL. Like I could see guys, some guys complain about things and I'm, you could just see them. Like they just didn't perform that great or they did because they're really gifted, but like the little things bothered them instead of like, eh, it's just the XFL. Like let's just keep it moving. The showers, the water's warm in the shower. <laughs> you know, like it was great. I, I, I love the league. We had good times with the boys going out in Tampa. We had, you know, good times practicing. And I thought the maturity that because of my lessons I learned from the AAF helped me become better in the XFL. Like I, I almost said like, I'm here to play in the NFL. I know I almost barely taken by the team and Ron Selesky pounded the table for me. Thank you, Ron. He did. And, and, you know, I ended up having a role, a good, pretty solid role and playing a lot of reps is like a why. And, you know, I just remember telling myself, I'm like, dude, just like get in here and focus on the NFL. Like, what does it take to be the best NFL players? Like my footwork and my, you know, picking everybody's brain on everything. And then after practice, I loved Mark's schedule. Like maybe the coaches didn't, but I loved it. We were done by like one. Right. <laughs> so I would lift for like two hours in season. Right. Like I came into training camp that year in the NFL on another level because I was, I was so, I was just strong. I was physically, you know, in great shape because I thought he gave us that time. So overall it was a just unbelievable experience for me, but I do think as a player, if you have some maturity, you're going to get a lot out of it. If you don't, it could kind of eat you up and, you know, spit you out because if you don't, it's just the little things bother you. Yeah, no. And that's, 
that's one of the things like if you go into a, a spring scenario where you're expecting it to everything to be you know the perfect situation hey i came from a power five program or i've been on an nfl roster how come it's not like this like there wasn't much you guys needed <clears throat> excuse me i mean we had a great facility you had a ton of of great resources available to you and it's mm -hmm. are you going to sit there and complain about what you don't have because it's you've seen it there's plenty of guys who should be on nfl rosters yes and it's just the right fit the right time you know somebody got hurt and so somebody else got another opportunity so on and so forth and if you just go into it and say like you did i'm going to make the most of this opportunity instead of okay yeah you've got a bigger goal the goal is to play on Sundays in the NFL. You want to wear the shield. The money's different. The life is different. The opportunities that are going to present itself are different, but it's all part of the journey. And if you utilize something like the Alliance of American Football to get that film, no, there was not enough financial backing in that league. And it broke a lot of hearts. I mean, I remember I was in the middle of the Alamo Dome. I was coaching on the San Antonio team. And Moose Johnson, Daryl Moose Johnson, Hall of Fame fullback, he was our general manager. And I could see him, I can see him as clear as day across the Alamo Dome on the phone with Bill Polian going like this, pick up the football, it's over. The league is done, not one more, we're in the middle of practice. And that thing ended and it was like, oh, so are we, are we really gonna complain about the meal and, and about the travel, like playing ball with your boys and getting paid to do it and getting great film is so, invaluable and then the xfl the way we were treated i mean to put us up for training camp to have a mini camp to bring these guys in um to have nfl caliber coaches you know mark tressman who i won three championships in the cfl with pete mangurian i mean guys that you know jerry glanville was our defense coordinator and Frank jerry Gaines. was awesome Frank. like you look at you look at the dichotomy of tressman who is so like detailed and everything's planned out and you knew exactly what your day was going to be about. And Jerry Glanville rolled in with his cowboy hat and his sunglasses. And it was like, he had no practice script, but both of them were very successful coaches. And I learned as an assistant coach that you take bits and pieces from everybody. Mm -hmm. And it's all about creating a great locker room environment, which I think we had, we had a great environment. We had a great, great group of guys. We had an awesome staff. Um, and it just, you know, ended up just exploding on us because of COVID. And yeah. just to recoup the money, they said, hey, we're going to file bankruptcy and then resold the league and rebranded. And here we go again, three years later. So it's exciting to see. I'm, I'm hopeful that we can bring in maybe some of the guys that have played in previous leagues. I also just finished doing the USFL, um, which is it was a great experience. Won the championship there. Um, was very fortunate to be on a great staff with Skip Holtz and, and had a blast. But I think the thing that's a little bit difficult about the USFL is there were 40 players signed to NFL rosters this past year from the USFL. Only a couple of them made it. And I think when you look at the schedule, we didn't finish our season until the first week in July. Mm -hmm. And there wasn't much time to recoup for guys to recover, to get to OTAs, to learn the system, to meet the guys, to – you know, just get immersed into the culture, talented players, but didn't really have a chance to establish really their identity on the team and on the roster. And the XFL is going to start the week after the Super Bowl. And so we'll be done first weekend in May will be our championship. Uh, and then guys have a couple months to rest, recover, learn a system, kind of see what's out there free agency wise. And you're and fresh. Like yeah. you just played ball. Roll. You just played ball. Like there's, there's nothing like ball. And, and if you're always going to value rest, especially older in your career, cause then you can go and you have some more bullets in the chamber. But like, I, I remember coming from that league and going to the training camp. I'm like, I'm ready to roll. Like I just mm -hmm. took this wide zone footwork not that long ago. Like, you know, and, and you and I could speak that language, but like, I know like, all right, I can play, I can have kind of the, some of the things that you pick up as the season goes on of the tendencies and the hand placement and the routes and whatever that may be. I just did this in March. Like it, it wasn't that bad. Honestly, the, it, it ended and it was horrible. And we were, I was livid. I thought it was first class. They paid us all the way through it. At least the players, right. You know, uh, that, that was really first class. They didn't have to do that, especially during those times. And 
I was able to like play football. I'm like, all right, let's take the positive of this. Like play football, put it in the bank that I did that. The film is the film. It is what it is. Okay. Let my body kind of digest and breathe and recover. And I just did like, I just literally did during COVID. We had so much time, right? It was such a unique period. Right. My wife, I got I lucky. Your parents had a place in Destin. So I just drove up, hung out there for two months of quarantine. We thought, you know, the whole two week thing, the league's going to come back. Right. Right. That never happened. But, you know, I was like, this is a blessing. Like I get to just train and get ready to go. And then right. boom, my phone, I looked down on my phone, like, you know, and you, and this probably happened to you too. Like it's not easy to just play or grind. It's not easy to just coach and grind. And I remember being like, man, my career is done. My career is my career done. I mean, I think I did some good things in the XFL. You know, I, I, I think I can do it. I know I can play in this league. I know I could be a third and fourth tight end on a lot of rosters in the NFL. I know I could be that guy. Long snap, you know, a little bit of a coach, a little bit of a leader. I think I could be that mm -hmm. role guy. And I remember being like, I don't know, man. I looked down at my phone 10 seconds later and Matt Rule called. I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, my phone ran. I pick up the phone. He's like, hey, let you know we're going to bring you in after the draft. You know, I thought you were one of the best whys, if not the best why in the league. We need guys in that role in our building. Or what I want to do, like let's go. Yep. And obviously, the relationship I have with Coach at Temple helps. But mm -hmm. you know, I was less like, "Wow, okay, it worked out okay." But you right. know, even if it didn't, I have no regrets. And it was just, I, I just look back and smile. Like I remember, like learning some jump, you know, jump set techniques from you. And like you got Gerald and my boy Yarbs on the bag after the practice. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna sit and watch this. Like, I think. It was the perfect storm. I think I can't wait to watch the league this year. You know, it kind of hit me when you say it's over the, the Super Bowl. I'm like, man, like we're going to have football all the way through again, mm -hmm. you know? And I think you're what you're saying for those at home, like it ends in April and then OTA start. And that's mm -hmm. when, you know, the NFL starts. Hopefully I'm in this league again next year. If not, Jaime, I'll come play for you in the XFL. Let's do it again, <laughs> baby. But you know, like guys can get in and show themselves and that's just on the tape, but people want to see how you walk and talk and interact with the people in the, you know, with the security people and the people that make your food and the training staff. And when you, when your season ends in July, you pop into a training camp in August and like, you're really just a camp body really. Cause you can't figure out the playbook quick enough. Like it's an right. absolute nightmare. Um, there's so much I digest, but what are you looking forward about 3.0? What's a little bit maybe different, or what's you know going to stay the same? I think it's a lot of stay the same as as two point I think we learned a lot um, in that. Um, I think it was going great. I mean, I, I think a lot of folks were watching. Um, uh, you know, a lot of TVs were you know were, were tuned in, and sure. I think just the accessibility with we're now Disney, um, ESPN, ABC. There's going to be a lot of different platforms that they're going to be able to put the games on. And it's, I think people see how um, accessible leagues can be. Um, last year when I was coaching in the, in the USFL, it was owned by Fox. So you had a lot of uh, games on Peacock and you could watch it digital. You could watch it on, on NBC and, and people just want content. You know, you, you want to be able to go to a bar, hang out. Hey, there's a game on. Oh yeah. I remember that dude. Oh, that's Colin Thompson. I remember that guy. That's literally all I'm thinking about, Jaime, is our vacations in the offseason. I'm like, great, right. now we got something to watch. When you said right. that, that was my first thing. Like, we're going to this bar. I'm watching this game. Right. I've already visualized it. <laughs> yeah, and 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 making it affordable, I think, for because it's it's hard for a working family to be able to go to NFL games. You know, I mean, yeah. that's huge. I'm looking at, hey, do I want to take my kids to a game? Like, damn, that's a kick right between the legs i gotta go take the fam and parking and the whole deal i mean it's that's tough for the regular joe unless it's like hey i gotta call this coach and hey can i get tickets and that's the last thing you want to do to a bunch of players and coaches when they're trying to do their job is yeah. to hustle and, and all that like the xfl is affordable it's you can go watch the games for super cheap it's guys that are playing pr big time pro ball and it's it's something that it's family entertainment for smaller markets. I mean, we're going to be probably in one of the bigger markets. We're going to be in Arlington and they moved it from the Dallas franchise to Arlington. They're going to have three teams in Texas. So it'll be Dallas, Houston, and San Antonio. And I was fortunate enough to coach in San Antonio with the Alliance of American football. I mean, the Alamo dome, that thing was sold out. Um, it was, I mean, we came and played you guys in Birmingham, but 
man, it was teams were having to go silent count on us in in, uh, in the dome. And I know St. Louis is going to do really well. They're picking up right where they left off. I think they, you know, went nuts with season tickets this past week with the announcements. Uh, they're moving a couple other franchises. They're moving the Tampa team to Orlando. Um, I think maybe stadium wise. I mean, Raven James was cool, um, but there was a whole lot of red in that stadium, not a whole lot of green for the uh, the old hometown Vipers. Um, yeah. But Love Tampa, I think though. there's yeah, I, th- I think there's an appetite for it in that area. They're keeping the DC team. Uh, it's a great stadium right there at, at Audi Field, right in DC. They moved the. Um, there's no longer a New York team. I think it was a tough market to be up there. Remember our opener? That was tough to play up there. That was um, weird. Yeah. And then they moved the LA team. They're moving it to Vegas. So I think Vegas is a good market too. So um, good markets mm-hmm. by adding uh, San Antonio moving to Orlando, and then also being in Vegas. So I think it's smart with how they've put different markets out there. Um, some NFL markets, but also springtime. Texas is is people are crazy for, for ball in Texas. So we got three franchises in, this, in the Lone Star State. Yep. Arlington Renegades, DC Defenders. That place was crazy for those listening. Yeah. The, the famous beer snake out of the back of the stadium. <laughs> That's yep. what it's that's what it's all about. We live in Annapolis, Maryland now, so we'll definitely go to a game. And if you guys come to uh right on DC, we'll go. Houston Roughnecks. Uh, obviously, PJ Walker was the quarterback there. Yep. My wife went to a game there. She's from Houston. She said they sold out a beer in the first half. <laughs> so that's fun. Orlando, you know, Guardian, especially with ESPN owning the league or being involved in the league, I should say. Mm-hmm. Orlando makes complete sense. And like you right. said, there's an appetite for it there. I love the Tampa as a player. There was some empty games. There's a lot going on in Tampa, Clearwater area, right. especially in the springtime with spring training. You got Tampa Bay Lightning. You got a right. lot of different beach, spring break. There, the people aren't going to football games in, in Tampa in the spring. San Antonio, that's awesome. Yeah. That's what a great place. Seattle. We had to go silent in Seattle. Remember we didn't practice it? Yeah. That was I a know. nightmare. That, that was, was a nightmare. That was nuts. Up, and that's a great stadium. You know, you're playing in an NFL stadium. Yeah. It was hype. He's, people were fired up. So I think – you know, there's some good markets. No doubt. St. Louis and then Vegas. Can't be Vegas. People are going to Vegas in the spring. Go catch a right. football game. It's an easy sell. Yeah, I remember Seattle. That's when it really hit me that I'm like, this is first class. We stayed at the JW, I think, down there. And I was like, yeah. all right, this is first class. We just flew six hours. Right. We had food the whole time. Like, yeah. they just treated us well. I enjoyed that. I, I walked into Seattle. You know, people always ask, like, what stadium? You, you know, Lambo, all these different places. And I, my first year in the league, Really, when I was playing the most that first year after COVID, or during COVID, I should say, all stadiums were empty, so I didn't get a feel for it. Lambeau was unbelievable, but when we went to Seattle in the XFL, I don't know. There was like so many visions of like Marshawn Lynch's touchdown run and like all these yeah. things as a kid. I was like, man, this is pretty cool. What stadium for you? You've been in so many, dude. Literally, I, before we go to that, though, I got to just run down Jaime's Jaime's list here. Well, I'll answer oh, no. the question first. Wait, is wait, the, you're gonna go down my list. Is the, there's not enough time on this, man. Okay, here we go. 03 to t- to now. Here we go. Calgary Stampede, UNLV, Harvard Westlake High School, head coach, San Diego State, O-line, Montreal Alouettes, Wake Forest, Edmonton Eskimos, Toronto Argonauts, Nevada, Toronto Argonauts again, San Antonio Commanders, shout out to the AAF, Tampa Bay Vipers, XFL, where we met, Air Force tight end coach, Birmingham Stallions, and now Arlington Renegades. You've been in a lot. Of stadiums, <laughs> yeah, is man. there a, There's a lot of gray in the beard now? A lot of gray in the beard, a lot of crazy old linemen you've been coaching, I'm sure. A lot of great guys, too. Is there uh, a stadium in your mind that you're like, Man, I love this place, this is awesome? I don't know. I mean, you kind of take personalities of, of franchises in different places. Like, I spent eight years in the Canadian Football League, and they are super passionate about their ball up there. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to win three championships up in that league. And, and you know, it was really cool, like, being in a place that I would have never gone to, go to, like, Montreal, Quebec, Canada, and to see how much that they love their, you know, they love their franchise, they love their ball, and they're blowing horns and drinking beers and having a blast, like, up on the hill right at McGill Stadium uh, that's right attached to McGill University. Those were some awesome formative years just in my early coaching and had a blast and worked with, you know, NFL caliber coaches. I mean, we had guys like Andrew Hawkins who, you know, Hawk was on the practice roster 
He was on the PR just sitting there waiting for his opportunity, running scout team over with me as the O-line coach. Like, hey, coach, what do you need me to do? Do you need me to, like, help out on, you know, be an extra backup linebacker on, on walkthroughs? And the guy goes and kills it in the NFL, and now he's doing great for himself, um, you know, in, in broadcast. And so, you know, I love my time in the CFL. Um, Stadium-wise, I, I mean, I when I was a player, probably the best place that I ever played in because I'm from Southern California, playing in the Rose Bowl. So, you know, playing in the Coliseum at USC was phenomenal, but to play in the Rose Bowl, to win a Rose Bowl championship as a player, just kind of college football, iconic stadium right there in the San Gabriel Valley. And, you know, you can just hear like Keith Jackson's voice just talking about the, you know, college football. And and that was special to me just growing up, playing at USC, playing there. Pro Stadium, that was awesome to be in Seattle. Um, you know, when I was with the Cardinals, we played in the, in the Silver Dome in Detroit. That was just kind of one of those cool places that you always see growing up and loving. Um, being in Raymond James was cool, but, you know, it was a little bit different just with the, the game day vibe and everything. But had a blast being able to be with the Kansas City Chiefs. Arrowhead most definitely has to be one of the tops on my list to, to be able to play in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. That's awesome. Okay, as we wrap things up here, I got to hit you with these, and I don't really do a ton of prep for the shows because I get the—I'm lucky enough to know you. So, okay, like the simple question: Who's the best offensive lineman ever? Or one of you know, give me two or three, and then who's okay. two or three that you coached that you think are some of the best ever? The guy that I—that I'll say hands down was just inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame this year, Tony Baselli. Uh, Tony was a left tackle at SC. I went into USC as a defense alignment and I was too small to be an O line and I hadn't grown yet. And, you know, I needed to hit that training table hard for the first mm. couple of years. So I got to be scout team D lineman against Tony every single day. And I got to watch Tony Baselli and Willie McGinnis at USC absolutely try to kill each other every day at practice. I mean, I was like young, clueless, freshman, red shirt, happy to be there, stand on the sideline, hold my helmet, you know, Hey, check me out, ladies. And I got to see these two dudes just absolute the bet. I mean, Willie McGinnis and Tony Baselli, one on one pass rush was like O line porn. I mean, it was crazy <laughs> to be able to like watch that. It was like, it was insane. Tony was the biggest, best athlete that I've ever seen and wow. only played, I think, six or seven years in the NFL because of injury. But I think one of the best ever big athlete, smart, grinder, um, physical, and just wanted to bury guys. So, a lot of people don't know about Tony, but he was inducted in the Hall of Fame this year. Pretty awesome um, to be able to be around him and just experience that form formidable years for me as a player. Hmm. Um, I don't know as a as a, I mean, there's so many good 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 guys out there, and I'm I'm more for the group, you know, and that's kind of my deal. I'm I'm about like let's put a good group together because you know you watch guys like. Quentin Nelson, dude, that guy is insane. He's one of the best guards to ever play the game. Mm -hmm. You invest that much money into him, and it's hard to see what's happening to the Colts right now, you know, just because of the instability and what's happening. you got to have the best group, the best unit. And so I always try to just make it about the unit. Hey, who can, who can protect the best? Who has the best, you know, rushing totals? Who's keeping their quarterback clean? And it's all about the five guys as one. And I had a couple – chances to coach tight ends the last couple of years. It was cool. I had loved coaching tight ends at the academy. It was a little bit different, but I miss the five fatties inside. And, and it's just, there's nothing like being around those five guys and being in meetings and having that time with them. It's, it's pretty awesome. So yeah. it's, I don't know that I can give too many more individual names, but man, best it's group. awesome when five guys are doing it. Who's the best group? The best group I ever had or just in. Yeah. Best group I ever had. I, I, had a group in, I, no, I had a group in, in Canada that was awesome. Three guys that were all CFL, um, you know, lineman of the year. I, I had a really awesome group up there. But, you know, it's it's neat to see when, when groups gel together and, and they can put something together. It's pretty awesome, which I think we had a chance to do that together in Tampa. We had a pretty good crew. So yeah. hopefully we can re restructure that thing here in the next few months. I love it. I love it, man. We'll be watching. Okay, as we wrap up, talk about five is one. Yeah, it's 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 something that I've done really since probably the last ten years. Once I when I started coaching at Wake Forest, um, 
it's kind of a mantra for the offensive line to be together. You talk about, hey, there's five alignment, but, you know, the analogy of, hey, if you strike with a fist, all five fingers together, one of the strongest forces that you can strike with. And if if one guy's doing his own thing or not on board or jumps off sides, goes the wrong way, bad aiming point, the play's going to be lost. So I've tried to incorporate that into kind of a, a training O-line culture, a little social media thing out there because that's such a big part people are always looking for you know something new something refreshing and trying to give a little bit of love to the big boys and so started training some guys got about 10 guys that I trained some high school and younger kids and then doing some camps for some guys out there and just trying to make it about the unit about the crew and so we've got five is one.com we've got gear five is one.com shop I mean just trying to do some different things we've got guys that I was able to coach when I was working with the Nike opening a couple years ago, guys at Clemson, guys at Michigan, guys at Oregon, Cal, Texas, Oklahoma, that I know that to hook them up and do a little bit of NIL deals with those guys to get their brands out there and help them out. But it's about unit and about the crew staying together, having a blast. There's nothing like a good O-line meeting room. There's nothing like it, Colin. No, there's nothing like it. I always try to come in, I mean, like, <laughs> I was hey, always like, hey, what are you guys doing? There I go. You, you were you were honorary member. We'd love you roll in. I mean, yeah. I had a chance to coach Austin Corbett, who's with you in Carolina. Oh, I coached Corbett at at, uh, at Nevada uh, for a year. I mean, that's one of the best dudes I've ever been around. Worker, grinder. But I'm sure in the O-line room, he's he's got everybody's attention just because he's such a, a great pro. Dude, he's such a good pro. Like, I've learned a ton. And he's such a good guy. And he's so laid back. Yeah. He is a – dude – he blows people up and lifts <laughs> people up. I'm like, what? So we got, yeah. I'll be, as we wrap up, I'll be honest. I saw this guy in OTAs. I'm like, uh, you know, that's why the problem with OTAs is there's value on it. And it's not even real football. That's really, that's what's been my hurdle. Cause it's like, all right, you can catch the ball. He moves. Okay. Right. But you know, he's not like knocking the hell out of someone in OTAs, even though we know there's no pads on, we still right. grade it. And you know, then you put the pads on it, it comes alive a little bit, particularly for me. But for Corby, like, I was like, who the hell is this guy? Like, right. he, dude, dude, he's a self made man. He was a walk on, became team captain. I mean, second round draft pick. I mean, come on, that dude, dude is exactly what you want on your on your line and in your locker room. Yeah. I mean, the Rams, right? They're hurting without him. Like, everybody, the guy's yeah. a stud. Yeah, he's a stud. Jaime, I appreciate you, brother. Five is one. I appreciate you sending me some garb. I wear it all the time. I just got to get a pick with it. I got to pick with Corby. I, <laughs> he's going to need a triple X, that big boy. But Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. Jaime, well, appreciate you coming awesome. on, man. Good luck this season. It's season. awesome to see you. It's awesome connect. Appreciate it. Good luck. Keep it rolling, man. You too, brother. Good luck, man.